just woke up, it's 5.30, and look, I've got this inflammation around my eyes. That's not good. And it doesn't really surprise me too much, because um, I kind of relaxed recently with everything, and that was reflected in my deuterium test results. Um, before I started to relax, I didn't have this kind of thing under my eyes, the bags under my eyes, when I woke up. And when I woke up in the morning, at this time, I'd feel really refreshed. This is why, partly why I started to sleep on the floor, to um, try and improve this. I thought that it was something to do with the way I was sleeping or um, something to do with that because I was waking up with achy muscles and just, yeah, the <laughs> bags and demise. I thought the sleep quality wasn't good because of that and initially I was having this positive effect from it but um, I received my deuterium test results late yesterday and um, it was kind of a um, it hit me, it's just, it hit me that um, just that relaxing from my, I'm still on strict ketogenic diet, but I was just not tracking things as well as I used to, to the exact gram. I was starting to eat more often and I did a few experiments with different foods and I've decided to now be a lot more strict, a lot more strict again with my sleep and my food and looking after myself. From my deuterium report we can see that my levels were elevated. Um, so they're not in the saturated range, which would be terrible, <laughs> but they are too high, way too high, and higher than I think they would have been in the past when I was being a lot more strict. So this is the range that I'm aiming to be in. I am on week one of my um, deuterium depleted water experiment but um, I want to be able to do this just not just with water because when you're on a ketogenic diet it naturally depletes deuterium that's one of the main mechanisms of the diet and if you're not doing it as well as you could be um, you're not going to naturally deplete deuterium by by um, having your own meta creating your own metabolic water that is naturally deuterium depleted. Now my breath test um, again suboptimal, and um, still not sure what this is. I think it's like an example of diet. Um, that's where it kind of should be. Or that's a better, a better range. Um, I haven't looked at this properly yet, but it's very interesting. Uh, so breath, yeah, it's not good, really not good. But I have time, and I know what I'm doing. I've done it before. Uh, I could tell with my body composition that things aren't as fantastic as they used to be. Nowhere near that. I used to wake up refreshed. And here's the difference between my breath and saliva tests that I had. They're both stupidly high, so I need to get this right down. 
and write down. And I know I can do it. The reason this is a real eye-opener for me, no, pun not intended, but <laughs> the reason it's a real eye-opener for me is because this shows that my risk of cancer recurrence will likely be elevated as well as the elevated uh, deuterium results there. So this is not a good thing, obviously. It's a life and death situation, literally. And I need to step up my game. So um, I know that I can achieve great things with this. And I'm going to really start being more serious again. And not only serious with that, but with my state of mind, because I've had some difficulties recently with that. And I noticed that I'm in danger of slipping into old habits from before my diagnosis with my mental health and stuff. So I need to keep a positive mindset because um, that can also help you have an increase in deuterium if you're not positive minded and um, having more of the cold showers, cold showers are good to have and thinking about the air that I breathe, the air quality, um, getting more plants in here, house plants um, and I need an air purifier in here. And I need to think about that. I need to not go into London as much. If I do, I need to pick areas that are less polluted. And I need to get one of those masks. These uh, city environments and these modern environments are leaders to have these high levels of deuterium. It's not just food. Um, and so I need to think about that and I need to adjust accordingly. I need to have strategies to overcome that because that's the reality that we face. Um, my home is not in London, but my term time home is. So I'd like to try and spend more time in my home because the air quality is much better. Um, and I do have um, good quality water most of the time. Well, all of the time, really. But I am drinking my deuterium depleted water, and now I think that will last quite a bit of time because. I know I need to get my deuterium levels down, and that's one of the most effective ways of doing that. But I will be thinking more about my diet as well. Um, yeah, that's um, again, it's an eye opener, and this is a very raw video because I don't like to have all these professional seeming <laughs> videos. Um, Professional meaning like I'm presenting some character to you. This is the real me. If things are not going well, I'll let you know things are not going well. I'm not going to have a fake persona out there. Um, but from now on, you will see a dramatic improvement in everything. And I'll go back to how... I used to be, but even better, because this will be gone in the mornings, um, my body composition will be in a really good state, uh, my mood will be in a really good way, and everything will be excellent, everything will be really good. Everything with my mum's cancer will be really good, because she's doing a deuterium depletion protocol that includes everything and I'm cautiously optimistic but the 
the main thing about that is the optimistic part. I sometimes have been a bit hard on myself and um, things are going really well in other aspects of my life. But as things were going well, I did notice I was getting caught up in this mental state of just kind of busy city life where you have all these expectations on yourself and um, you let things get to you a bit and you get caught up in this fast paced, fast paced world where you need to slow down and take stock of what you have and how good things are for you and how, thing, how good things could be. I need to have a good routine again and uh, that's so important and a good sleep routine. Last night I slept for seven and a half hours. I went to sleep at ten, I woke up at half three uh, sorry, half five, not half three. And um, again, just focusing on my sleep quality. So, yeah, from now on, everything will be how it used to be when I kept a journal of every little thing. And I had a routine whereby I had to do every little thing of what was in that diary every or that journal every day and that led to success success meaning I felt good I had good sleep my seizure threshold was higher I noticed that since being a lot more relaxed my seizure threshold has got a lot lower and I've had to do all these little tricks and things but if my sleep's good I can if my sleep's good, my diet's good, my water intake is adequate, meaning I also noticed I was starting to drink too much water. And that's not good because you... That's not good because if you're on a well-formulated ketogenic diet for cancer management, you actually naturally drink less water because the main mechanism of a ketogenic diet for cancer management should be that you are generating more metabolic water and I'll show you why this is important. A simple Google search will show you that metabolic water refers to water created inside a living organism through their metabolism by oxidizing energy containing substances in their food. So when you eat protein, carbs and fats, you have different amounts of metabolic water that you produce. So if you think about a camel, a camel has a hump. And in the camel hump, you don't have water, you have fat. And, uh, oh, I think that's <laughs> camel hump fat, maybe. I don't know. I <laughs> um, haven't seen that before. But, um, yeah, that's how they survive in the desert. They create their own metabolic water. So they can survive for a long time. Apparently it's this new superfood. Interesting. Pump fat. <laughs> but they can survive for um, a long time in the desert because uh, it's actually really interesting. I might start uh, looking into this kind of, this um, camel fat actually. Might be a new thing I try. Anyway, where was I going with this? Yeah. Uh, ben Greenfield eats this fat. Okay. So, metabolic water in camels. Yes. Um, aha. Uh -huh. You see, um, sketchy science. 
You see, um, the fat that's contained here, they create metabolic water from that. And humans can do the same thing. And um, fat contains 50% more metabolic water than, creates more, 50% uh, more metabolic water than carbohydrate. Yeah, um, around 50%. It's saying here, 60 grams of water per 100 grams for carbs and um, 100 grams per 100 grams of fat. Okay. 42 grams of water per 100 grams of protein. So fat almost... Um, Fat is almost 50% uh, more grams than carbs, and with carbs you hold on to water, and uh, that water will be high in deuterium. And the metabolic water that you produce from fat will be naturally deuterium depleted, and will be... Um, 50%, around 50% more than the carbs. Also, you it's a very efficient energy source. So your, and, uh, your mitochondria will produce energy much more efficiently. Um, and uh, it will be good for the mitochondria. So, uh, yeah, your mitochondria will start to function better, you'll have more energy, you will uh, just have healthier mitochondria, that ATP synthase portion, the, AT the, um, the energy producing um, end stage of the electron transport chain will be functioning better, this bit at the top the ratchet system, that will be less, uh, that will be able to function more smoothly because in a low deuterium environment, um, this will be much faster. Um, it will function a lot more efficiently rather than if you have heavy water there in the, in the um, matrix of the mitochondria. The water, the um, yeah, the matrix water in the mitochondria will be light, lighter water, so deuterium depleted water. So this will function better, and then uh, go through here, and the energy produced um, will be much more efficient, and the mitochondria will um, be healthier. And with healthy mitochondria, you don't have cancer. So, be like a camel and uh, produce your own metabolic water. That's the aim of the ketogenic diet. The main aim for cancer management. And the thing we have to realize as well is just a way of monitoring that is that you will notice your, you will notice that you are, uh, let's see here, you will notice that you're less thirsty if you do it properly on a ketogenic diet, you will be more, um, you'll be less thirsty. And um, since I've been Monitoring my water, I've been feeling better, drinking less water, and focusing more on my diet. And, uh, yeah. Different fats have different benefits in that way, meaning some are more deuterium depleted than others. You definitely don't want hydrogenated oils. Um, 
animal fats are excellent. And um, yeah, the water is at least 60%. Uh, your body is at least 60 to 70% water. So very important, metabolic water um, is very important. So I'm kind of rambling now, but you can see the importance of this, especially the importance of this and you can see the Metabolic Health Summit there in my uh, search. Very important, um, very important conference for talking about this kind of stuff. But anyway, yeah, Metabolic Water. See if I can find a picture of that, or I'll create one. But um, yeah, extremely important metabolic water. And you can find out more about that and deuterium depletion, methods of deuterium depletion, on uh, this website the cent for the Center for Deuterium Depletion. This is where I had my deuterium depletion test from, tells you all about it, about why it's important for health, um, what you'd normally do if you wanted to find out more and apply a deuterium depletion protocol for yourself, various tests you can have, it's actually how MRI scans work, which uh, it's crazy how we don't put two and two together and realize just how important this is for health, that we have high deuterium in areas where there's cancer and in the body as a whole, you will have um, high amounts of deuterium in the tissues, which is what you don't want for health and modern lifestyles are, and modern environments are raising the amounts of deuterium to levels where, whereby we get these diseases. And if you want prevention, like me, uh, you drink Preventer deuterium depleted water. So what you do is you send off your MRI scans or your PET scans and um, they read them. Um, and they Look at your follow-up scans over time, and um, they're able to show that the high levels of protons, high ratio of protons from hydrogens, um, correlate with the um, status of status of the cancer and its metabolic state. So we need to look at cancer metabolism here, rather than just looking at an image and then looking at an image over time and seeing what the changes are. Why don't we see what's going on with those changes rather than just seeing what the changes look like? Um, that's what I would ask. This is what I had, measuring deuterium in the body. Um, you can also test your drinking water to see uh, what it's like. Normally it's around 150 parts per million. You would also need to think about humidity. So if you have uh, a lot of humidity in your room, of water vapor in your room, you might want to um, have a, um, a humidifier in your room. This is the water that I have currently. Um, I have uh, 25 parts per million, but I um, add normal water to it from a glass bottle um, to make this amount, the 105, around 105 to you. Well, 85, 205 parts per million is what I have. And um, 
I will be... My mum does all this stuff. And uh, I should probably do that too, eventually. Um, so yeah, that's um, all I have to say at this moment. I will update you on my progress and how I get my health in an optimal range. <laughs> Um, an optimal range in my tests and also subjectively how I feel. And uh, I'll have another test once I've finished all my water and made the changes I need to make. And uh, you'll see a new me in just a few months. Maybe even less than that. Maybe even just in one month. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to making positive changes.